Hey, what's up everybody? Taylor from Oddbit here. Um, I really wanted to talk about this device. This is a $35 HDMI capture dongle card thing, um, but it's not what you expect. So this is something that's very specialized in that you can't use it for every scenario. So if you're doing like very low latency streaming, I would recommend an Elgato HD60 or HD Pro uh, or their new 4K capture card that goes into the PCIe slot. Um, this is actually just useful for on the couch streaming and if you already have a wired network set up in your home. So really quickly, just so we can kind of talk about the hardware of this guy, um, we have a barrel port. Uh, for five volts, we have an HDMI input. And then the other side, we just have an ethernet plug right there and then a little reset button. So how this works is you basically plug in any input you want into the HDMI port. Uh, you can also power this off of a USB power brick uh, to a barrel port or it comes with just a little plug, powers it. And then you just plug this into your network. So I have a network switch behind my TV that uh, powers my Xbox, my Nintendo Switch. Uh, I have a Chromecast. Uh, built into the TV and it has an Ethernet port. So everything's wired here. Um, that's really useful because that switch follows all uh, along my living room to my main streaming computer, which is right here. And from that, um, I can actually capture this video stream being sent out by this device and then pull it up into OBS and stream it. Okay, so let's start setting this device back up. So I went ahead and plugged it in back behind my TV. And now you're gonna need an application such as this. So this is Angry IP Scanner. Uh, any IP scanner will work. Basically, you just need to figure out what the IP address of that device is that you just plugged into your network. So I'm gonna run a scan really quick. Here is my device. Uh, you kind of figure that out just by um, trial and error. So what I would do is I ran a scan of my network before I had the device plugged in and then I ran it after and whatever one popped up was my device. So we learned that it's 192.168.86, so 58. After you do that, you need to navigate to a web browser and input this code. So this is how you can tell your device to stream to one computer. So whatever streaming computer is on your network, you actually need to tell that device to send the video only to that device. Uh, by default, I believe it just sends multicast packets, which sends data to every device on your network. That can kind of wreck networks because you're sending out so many packets everywhere. So now from OBS, you can actually open up media source. Um, you can just call this HDMI capture and you're gonna uncheck local file. Uh, I like to uncheck restart playback when source becomes active because there's a slight delay, you know, that one second delay whenever you switch to a scene using that HDMI capture point. Um, and you're going to type in RTP and then colon slash slash whatever the address of your local computer is. So I'm sending it to um, 10, which is my local computer's IP address, and then the 5004. And hardware decoding is fine hide source when playback ends is fine, and then you click OK. And after you do that, you should start to see this. So if nothing's plugged into your HDMI capture device, it's gonna pop up with that. Um, I think it's sending 720p, which I'm gonna scale back up to 1080, and there you go. So now, if you just plug in any device into that capture card, you can now see that my switch pops up. Let me just pair my controllers here and now we can enter and look at that streaming quality is actually pretty decent by default it sends a stream of about 12 megabits per second video and audio are synced pretty well from the device for my needs this is perfect so now i can just go in you can add a camera source right here you can add an audio source and then an overlay and your stream is basically done and you can stream from your couch some notes that i would recommend I would not do this if you don't know anything about networking or uh, don't have a Ethernet ran to your computer or the source where your HDMI is going to be ran from. I just wouldn't recommend it because if you do run into a problem, it's going to be pretty hard to find support. Um, you can always leave some comments down below and I can try to help you with it. But for the most part, this is hacking together something for an intended use that it wasn't meant to, to be used for. As far as content production on HDMI, I think it's called HDCP. 
high definition content protection or something like that. I had to use an HDMI splitter. So any HDMI splitter that you find on Amazon will work for this. Um, for my Switch, you know, I, I was putting my Switch into this device, wasn't getting anything, um, and I didn't know why, and put a splitter in, and that allowed me to use my TV and the device, which is what I was gonna use in anyway, but you know, the uh, benefit of this device was that it actually got rid of the content protection. Now, if you're just using this within your own home, it's totally fine. Uh, something like this would work great. One input, two outputs, and it's $16 free one day delivery with prime shipping. So for about 50 bucks, you get a pretty capable capture solution over your network, which is exactly what I needed. And I kind of want to play with getting another one to see if two could work over the network simultaneously. Um, something I do want to point out really quickly for those advanced users, if you want to get a little bit better performance out of this device like I did, um, you can scroll down in this blog post and he talks about how he was talking with the eBay seller and he wanted new firmware for this device um, and he stumbled across this. So this is a Google Drive folder with a bunch of um, firmware files but also this thing called IPTV tool. So this IPTV control center, I downloaded that, installed it, um, found out that it gives you a bunch of options on how to control this device. So if I pull up the actual window here, click start scan, this is just gonna scan your network for devices. I've named mine Video LAN. Yours might be named like TX0044 or some, some, some. You just select that, so now you go to the TX setup page because you're transmitting. Pick your device and you can see all the details. So you can actually see the IP address. This would be useful for the IP address finding in the first part of this video, but I think an IP scanner would be a better way to go about that. And here you go. Uh, you can actually tell it, okay, use DHCP, which basically means your router is gonna give it an IP address. And here's the part where you can increase the video quality. So for some reason, um, when I plug my Nintendo Switch in, even though I, th I believe it was sending out a 1080p signal, uh, this device still thinks it's just normal 720p, so it sends it at 1500 kilobits per second. This is different. Uh, I actually bumped this value up a bit, so this is sending at 15 megabits per second over my network, and if I give it a full 1080p signal, it's going to send 20 megabits per second, and then standard definition just 5 megabits per second. Um, you can also rescale things, so full HD you can scale up uh, back down. Um, and then all this other stuff, pretty much, you know, don't mess with unless you want to change your device name, which is what I did. Um, I also, uh, unicast is how you send to one device. I didn't mess with that, I just did the browser method. Uh, and then once you're done, you just click update and it updates your device with all the new information. Um, other than that, uh, I'm getting 720p 60 frames per second for my Nintendo Switch, which is exactly what I needed to use this for. And it looks great. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this has been useful for you. Uh, links are always down in the description for the firmware updater tool and like device configurator as well as the eBay link to buy this. Um, if you have any questions about how to set this guy up, leave a comment below and I'll get back to it. Uh, again, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.